Welcome to Whiteboard Crypto, the number one YouTube channel for crypto education. And here, we explain topics of the cryptocurrency world using analogies, stories, and examples so simply that even your grandpa could understand them. In this video, we're going to be explaining what Harmony is, why it's important for Harmony in the crypto space, and the features that make Harmony One attractive to use. Plus, the clever tokenomics of Harmony's token One. Let's dig in. First off, what is Harmony One? To answer this question, we have to first understand what motivated the creation of Harmony One. You see, Ethereum had been around for a couple of years and people in the space understood its true potential, but to be frank, at the time, Ethereum just wasn't good enough. The COO of Harmony One explained on the Cheeky Crypto podcast that there were some limitations in terms of speed and performance, so we set out to make a chain that is fast, decentralized, and very secure, and that would scale to potentially billions of people using many different products. So what? A ton of projects claim to be lightning fast, decentralized, and still secure. And if you've been around on this channel for a while, you know that this claim is not unique. Harmony One, though, is very serious about speed. As of December 2020, they announced that transactions were achieving finality within two seconds at a maximum, and usually taking finality around one second, significantly faster than most blockchains. Finality is the technical term on which everyone in the network agrees that your transaction is confirmed and it cannot be undone. Now, Harmony One achieves this quick finality by letting people who validate blocks combine messages across the network, which reduces the amount of CPU power required and increases overall speed. They also use something called block proposal pipelining, which is a fancy term for letting the network to start validating blocks before other ones are technically finished. Now, a good example of this is like if the clerk at the grocery store could start scanning items for the next customer while the current customer is bagging their groceries or maybe finding their way to pay. It allows the network to get a head start on the next blocks in the chain. Moving on, we know that speed is great, but usually it takes some shortcuts that can potentially be seen as security risks. Remember, the idea of Harmony is to solve practical problems and make blockchains more usable. And an insecure chain is a deal breaker for the average person. So how does Harmony manage to maintain their speed and security as they scale? The answer is sharding. But before we get into explaining sharding, I want to take a minute to tell you about our very own crypto community called Whiteboard Crypto Club. Whenever you join, I personally send you $20 of Ethereum, you get to claim a monthly NFT, and you also get access to hundreds of blockchain tutorial videos. So far, we have tutorials on 10 different blockchains, as well as a section on organizing your crypto taxes and even fundamental and technical analysis. Now you might be thinking, Wow, Theodore, that sounds so valuable to someone new to crypto like me. And you would be right, because the best thing you get whenever you join is access to a private community of warm and helpful crypto enthusiasts who are in the trenches just like you are. If you want to go ahead and join and claim all the crazy bonuses I've added to it, you can check the link in the description below. And if you don't enjoy your stay, I always offer a 100% no questions asked 30 day refund policy. Currently, there's over 3,000 members, so I'm betting that you won't take the bonuses and run, but you could. Let's get back to explaining sharding. Sharding is what actually enables the features that I mentioned earlier. Like many other blockchains, Harmony uses this process for several benefits. To get an in-depth explanation of sharding, you can actually check out our entire video on it. For a quick explanation though, sharding is basically splitting up a blockchain into different shards, which can all run simultaneously in order to speed up the chain and reduce congestion. You can think about it like upgrading from a one lane highway to a five lane highway. There's just more road or space for the blockchain info to travel through. Introducing new shards means less congestion on the blockchain, which also means you can easily add more users without slowing it down or having high gas prices. Because reducing congestion also means you tend to have lower fees because of simple supply and demand. The more people that use a blockchain, they will all be competing to fill up the blocks. And because of this, the fees paid to be in a block will be higher. And we can see that on the Ethereum chain right now as some transactions can take up hundreds of dollars. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why doesn't everybody use sharding? And the first thing I'll say to that is technically Ethereum 2.0 is moving to sharding. But the real question is, what's the downside of sharding? Well, sharding might be able to scale, but introducing a few more highway lanes or shards can be a security risk. A bad actor could take over a shard and cause problems for the entire chain. For example, if there's 10 shards, it would be much easier to take over a tenth of the network and own that entire shard than it is to own the entire massive blockchain, if that makes sense. 
If it does, you might be wondering how does Harmony One solve this? Well, they use a slight modification of the proof of stake mechanism that many other blockchains actually already use. They created something called effective proof of stake. Now, Harmony's effective proof of stake is a clever way of making sure that stakers are still rewarded while also preventing stakers from taking over an entire shard. In a normal proof of stake mechanism, inequality becomes a huge issue because it's easy for the power in a network to be controlled by those with most of a certain token. Bitcoin maximalists, or people who only believe in Bitcoin, have consistently criticized proof of stake for this. They usually claim that proof of work guards against centralization in a free market. Now, their theory is, for example, if you hold most of the Ethereum coins, you can actually stake those coins and then basically own the entire network to gatekeep or remove or add in certain transactions. And I mean, technically they're right. Anyways, Harmony avoids this stake centralization while also rewarding stakers by modifying rewards. They also add security by introducing a downtime penalty and bans against bad validators. They also incentivize nodes that catch bad actors. So without getting too technical, each shard requires 250 nodes to participate. However, it uses a randomized sequence of all the nodes on the network so that each time a new block is produced, it would be a different set of 250 nodes. For example, let's say there's four shards. This would mean there would be around a thousand nodes. And by the way, if you don't know what a node is, it's simply a term that means computers which are helping produce blocks on the network. Anyways, each time a shard confirms a new block, it's a new set of randomly selected 250 nodes. All right, that may have been confusing. Let me put it even more simply. This means each node is assigned to a random shard every block, meaning it would be very difficult for a bunch of nodes to collude and join together and own one shard, let alone the entire network. So Harmony has introduced a few clever modifications to make sure their ecosystem is fast, scalable, and secure. But what actually is their ecosystem? Have you heard of any dApps on their network? Have they connected any other chains to Harmony? Some people might say in describing Harmony One, you might be tempted to compare it to Polkadot. Now, although the idea is similar at a high level, the chains work very differently. They serve different functions. Polkadot describes itself as a layer zero blockchain, letting people experiment and test, and provide intuitive ways to create blockchains and blockchain bridges. Harmony is not really a layer at all, but more of a hub. And because Harmony One's goal is to make things easier and more usable in the crypto space, they focus on mostly creating bridges between different blockchains. Specifically, they created something they called the Horizon Bridge. Now this bridge lets users go back and forth easily between Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, even NFTs like ERC721 and ERC1155 tokens, a Polkadot chain on the test network, and they are even working on connecting the Bitcoin network, as well as an API that will make all of this easier. Now, some of you might be pointing out, why not just use Zilliqa? The answer to this, and to avoid potential competition with Polkadot, is that Harmony actually lives up to its name and tries to promote interoperability between chains rather than competing directly. They shy away from the siloed nature of some blockchain projects in favor of openness, transparency, and camaraderie, which we can actually see with their emphasis on promoting DAOs. Finally, the last part of the Harmony One ecosystem is the usage of their token, One. Before we get too far into the tokenomics of the One token, you should note that I put together a pretty large research guide for Harmony One. It includes a lot of time sensitive stuff, and just like I did with the Chainlink video, to get it, you'll have to go to Google and type in Harmony One price prediction, and then look for our whiteboardcrypto.com website. Again, I'm not really a big fan of price predictions, but the amount of people out there wanting them is so massive, I couldn't help but lure them in with price predictions, and then just spoon feed them the data that they would need to make their own educated guesses on coins like one. Let's continue. So as we can expect, Harmony One has its own token, and as you have probably already noticed, it's called One. The token is used for typical purposes like fees on the network and staking, even governance and voting on changes in the network. You can also stake one, and to stake one you need at least 100 tokens. And then also to validate, or actually be a part of the network, you need 10,000 tokens. Staking is a term where you can basically point to someone else who is validating and say, I trust them, let them vote for me. 
and then you'll also get a share of the rewards that they earn, without having to set up any complicated computer equipment or having a dedicated internet line. This is called delegated proof of stake, but with the introduction of sharding and a few other mechanisms, Harmony created their variation that I already mentioned called effective proof of stake. Now, like many other chains, one is used to pay for transactions, and it's burned whenever you make a transaction. But one other interesting thing is that Harmony mints a maximum of 441 million one tokens per year, which means means that the supply of one tends to be inflationary. Now, it doesn't have to be inflationary, because if there's a high enough transaction volume, the newly minted one coins would simply be burned in fees and thus not contribute to inflation. However, it is worth noting that the average transaction burns only a very small amount of one, around 0.000021 coins. One factor to consider here is that one can actually never be deflationary, as the tokens burned from penalties and the fees are actually taken out of the 441 million group that are minted. This means one is unlikely to have the same fortunate price action as Bitcoin due to Bitcoin's deflationary pressure. Now, it can of course increase in price for other reasons, but some argue that if one is deflationary in nature, the incentive to hold it would be greater than to spend it, basically resulting in a network that is not used as much as they want it to be used. Harmony One may not have the specific exciting use cases that attract a bunch of eyes, or an amazing hyped up marketing team with billions of dollars, but they are doing quite a few things right. They are committed to increasing access across the entire world of crypto, and clearly have clever contributors who are creating a very well thought out platform for all crypto users. As we end this video, if you want to dip your toes into the world of DeFi, and maybe even learn a thing or two about how people are currently earning money, you can head over to whiteboardcrypto.com and sign up to our newsletter, which will also give you our free Discord link and our free DeFi for Beginners guide. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, I really hope that maybe you've learned something, and most of all, as with all of our videos, I hope to see you in the next one.